Uh, overall, I am satisfied. Uh, I am departing from Cambodia with a sense of both a professional and a personal satisfaction. A lot of positive change has taken place in this country over the past six years. And I believe I have been able to make some contribution to making that difference. There are some issues on which we have not been able to make as much progress as I would have liked to. For instance, the land rights, the independence of the judiciary, the arrest of people for political purposes, the judiciary being used as a political tool. These are the areas which still uh, are in need of a big improvement. But on the other hand, in terms of policy framework, in terms of a more overarching reform, we have made progress in this country. For instance, the reform, of the, the enactment of the three fundamental laws for the reform of the judiciary. These are the reforms which will not make judiciary fully independent, effective uh, overnight. The results of my work will start to, the impact of my work will start to show in five, ten years time. For instance, the election for the Supreme Council of Magistracy. People contested openly. Some younger members of the judiciary came forward and fielded their candidacy. I interacted with one of the persons recently elected. Therefore, I remain hopeful, I remain optimistic, and I remain positive about the future of a democracy, human rights, and uh, rule of law in this country. Uh, it did not cross my mind, but uh, during one of my missions, my wife was accompanying me. When she read what was uh, published in the media, the treatment meted out to them, she said, perhaps you should consider resigning. Uh, when you go, go back to the UK. But I personally thought, I have a contribution to make. I have a contribution to make for the betterment of the people of Cambodia. I am not generally a quitter. I am a fighter on principal grounds. Once I commit myself to doing something, I would like to give my best, deliver to the best of my ability, remain courteous, remain pragmatic, remain as diplomatic as possible, in my approach, but deliver the message that has to be delivered as the UN Special Rapporteur. If I don't speak out, nobody will speak for human rights in this country. That's the responsibility. And I, as a lawyer, as an academic, as a practicing barrister, I knew what I was letting myself into when I accepted the United Nations appointment. Once I commit myself to doing certain things, I would like to see it through. That's what I decided to carry on. And I'm pleased that I did. Because over the past one or two years, my hard work has started to bring about results, tangible results, substantial progress. Many of them are on paper, but at least it's better to have them on paper rather than no improvement. So now the framework for reform, the package of political reform, the reform of the NEC, the reform of the judiciary, the moratorium on economic land concessions, the package of compensation, the expropriation law, there have been some notable improvements within the country. I am by very nature a pacifist, a Buddhist, a Hindu, believe in taking a, an approach which is courteous. The language you use, the manner you deal with people should be as courteous, as diplomatic, as pragmatic as possible. That's what I do in other works of life, not only in Cambodia. I've done so many other work. I was in previous uh, uh, um, career an advisor to the King of Nepal. I have been an advisor to the British Foreign Minister on Human Rights for the past four or five years. Cambodia is not the only example of my work. That's elsewhere also, I have taken the same approach. I'm a result-oriented person. I want to bring about some tangible results. Rather than shouting loud for feel-good factor, feeling good one night, and then the wake up the following morning, what have you achieved? I want to achieve something and fashion myself accordingly, mold myself accordingly and deliver the message. I don't think the delivery of my message have been any weaker than the delivery of the message by anybody in Cambodia, including my predecessor. But my approach, every individual has his or her approach. They are informed by your well-being, your, your upbringing, your education, your ethos in life. My ethos in life have been do good to the world. Doing good to myself by doing good to the world. In Cambodia, people do not have a proper appreciation of the role of the special rapporteur. 
my mandate is to protect human rights, not to please anybody. Uh, that one thing. The other thing, people have not understood the meaning of the word independence. When I say independence of a state institution, if you are elected by people to govern, then you are allowed to do anything you want to, provided that you do through, through parliament, by enacting laws. But these laws themselves should conform to international standards, should conform to the principles of the rule of law. We are not talking about rule by law, rule of law. There is a big difference between the two. And rule of law means independence of state institutions. You are elected to govern the country. That doesn't mean that you can cross the boundaries of independence of state institutions, namely the judiciary or national election committee or some other state institution. So perhaps I am prepared to give that benefit of doubt to people, both in the government and elsewhere. It takes a long time for people to adapt, absorb the message. Um, countries, for instance, I have been living in the UK for a long time. It took a long time for them to reach where they are. It's a country known as mother of democracy or mother of parliament, mother of rule of law, uh, two, three, four hundred years of history. This year, in the UK, we are celebrating 800 years of anniversary of the adoption of Magna Carta, the main, the, the, the first document outlining what are the rights and of the uh, people, what are the restraints on the monarch, making the monarch subject to the law of the land for the first time. Nearly 800 years of history is there in Cambodia. The real progress began with the conclusion of the Paris Peace Accords. Paris Peace Accords won in 1991, just yesterday, given to, uh, compared to the history of 800 years of many other countries. So people are gradually understanding. My job has not been to criticize or make recommendations. Tell them what is right for the country, basically playing the role of a, an educationalist. That's what I've been doing, interacting with so many people both in the government, outside of government, in the opposition party, the civil society, the ordinary people in the street, the youth, delegations after delegations have come to see me, asking for my views about what do we mean by the rule of law, what do we mean by greater respect for human rights. Therefore, my work has direct, indirect impact, educational impact, creating an understanding, enhancing an understanding, developing an understanding, of greater respect for human rights, the rule of law, democracy, transparency, accountability, independence. These are rather uh, difficult concepts for people to understand. Well, I remain hopeful uh, at this point in time because when you go to elections, you go with only two possibilities, winning and losing. There are both possibilities for any political party. CPP the same thing. So I think the country will be ready if the CNRP were to win the election, I think the country will be ready to accept it. That's what has happened in Sri Lanka recently. Raja Pakshe, who people thought was invincible, he collected a group of supporters around him. He thought power was never going to slip away from his hands. When the people had the opportunity, people did so. His own minister decided to compete against him and people accepted it. So I think here the um, situation is maturing itself. People are understanding now. If it's a proper functioning democracy, nobody has to fear of anything. Those who will be out of power will be respected equally. My structure will come and interact with them as well, listen to their concerns. It's a normal thing in democracy. One day you win elections, and the day you will lose elections. All I'm concerned that the elections should be freer, fairer, inclusive, and conducted in accordance with both national and international standards. I don't think Maybe ten, 10 years ago, the situation would have been different. But now Cambodia is maturing. The people are re beginning to realize the demonstrations we have seen in the recent past, sometimes approaching 100,000 people, sometimes even more. They have their hope, they have their ambition. Democracy is about willing to accept defeat. I think people will come to realize perhaps learn from mistakes and try another time to win. Four or five years passed by very quickly. In your lifetime, my lifetime, and more so in the life of a nation. I was 
uh, following the developments in Cambodia long before I was appointed as a special rapporteur. I have taken an interest. Cambodia is a very interesting country for any lawyer, for any international lawyer, more so for an Asian international lawyer. Therefore, I will keep uh, an active interest in Cambodia and I will be very sad to see if the country were to return to violence of some form. But I think now there is a maturity. Today, dialogue is taking place between two main political parties. There may be other more political parties who will come into existence and participate in the elections. Um, at this point in time, I remain hopeful for a peaceful political transition in the country.